Flexible NFL Helmet Designed to Reduce Concussions This NFL season, about 70 players are wearing a new state-of-the-art helmet designed to lower the risk of concussions. The Vices Zero One was specifically designed to soften the blows NFL players take to their heads during games. The helmet is made of four different protective layers. The outer shell is made from flexible thermoplastic that compresses to absorb shock, then rebounds, much like a car bumper. Next is a layer of more than 500 polymer columns that can twist and move laterally, reducing the impact of rotational acceleration, a major cause of concussions. Underneath that is a hard inner shell that helps prevent skull fractures and brain hemorrhages. Below that, a layer of memory foam provides the player comfort. About half of NFL teams have put in orders for the Vice's helmet. NFL players get to choose their own helmet from an approved NFL list. The league has been looking to address concussions, especially as it has faced increasing scrutiny. Medical experts and players are concerned that repeated concussions increase the likelihood of developing CTE, a degenerative brain disease. Hike! How small changes to a football helmet could prevent injuries on the field. Football faces harsh criticism as it's become alarmingly clear that a large number of football players, both professional and those who aren't, suffer from the long-term effects of head traumas that originate on the field. While some argue that the rules of the game and football culture itself need to change, others are experimenting with modifying something relatively more simple, the helmet. A standard football helmet has two layers, a hard outer shell and an inner layer of padding that's usually made of foam. The human brain is protected by a layer of fluid within the skull. However, that layer doesn't provide enough protection during sudden or forceful impacts, and that's how concussions happen. A typical helmet has several inches of padding inside that slows the acceleration of a direct hit and weakens the force of an impact. Some companies have experimented with putting another layer of padding outside the helmet that can further weaken the force of a hard impact. But that doesn't help against hits from the side that could rotate a player's head, twisting the person's brainstem. This damages the nerves there. A prototype helmet called Zero One has several layers of padding. A malleable outer layer bends inward during direct hits. The layer underneath bends at an angle during rotational hits. Football helmets are not perfect and it's unlikely they'll ever be able to prevent every type of head injury that could happen on the field. But they've come a long way from here. NFL acknowledges brain disease link. The NFL's health and safety officer acknowledged on March 14th that there is a link between the repeated heavy hits players endure and a devastating chronic brain disease. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as CTE, is a progressive brain disease that develops following repeated head impacts that shake the brain inside the skull. Blows to the head cause tau proteins, which hold together microtubules in the brain cell's transport system to modify and detach from the microtubules. Abnormal tangles of tau proteins accumulate over time, ultimately killing brain cells. The helmets worn by football players cannot protect them from repeated subconcussive hits because the brain inside the skull is still shaken by these hits. Researchers with the Department of Veterans Affairs and Boston University have identified CTE in 90 of the 94 deceased former NFL players they have examined. NFL report confirms Patriots knew about deflated footballs. A 243-page report released by the NFL on Wednesday has revealed it is more than probable than not that the New England Patriots personnel deliberately deflated footballs below league standards. A regulation NFL football has to be inflated between 12.5 to 13.5 pounds per inch. 11 footballs tested during the AFC Championship game in January were found to be significantly underinflated. A New England Patriots locker room attendant and equipment assistant are believed to have released air from 11 to 12 game balls with Patriots quarterback Tom Brady aware of the deflation. Deflated balls are easy to throw, catch, and grip than standard regulation footballs. The report separately determined that Patriots had not deliberately tried to introduce any improper football for kicking and cleared kicker Steven Goskowski for any wrongdoing. A member of the Indianapolis Colts, whom the Patriots defeated 45-7, gave officials a ball that was underinflated during halftime.
The report said only three Patriot members knew about the under-deflated balls. The league previously fined the Patriots and forced them to forfeit a first-round draft pick after a staff member was caught videotaping signals by New York Jets coaches during a 2007 game. The NFL has yet to take any disciplinary action in light of the report. Study finds brain disease in 96% of former NFL players tested. Many young athletes dream of playing in the NFL. But what most of them don't take into consideration is the risk of brain disease. A study by the Department of Veteran Affairs and Boston University found that 87 out of 91 former NFL players tested suffered from a brain disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. CTE is a brain disease that researchers believe is caused by repetitive head trauma. Brain scans can detect signs of CTE, but it can only be confirmed posthumously. The disease causes a protein called tau to form around blood vessels in the frontal lobe. During stage 2, sufferers may experience rage, impulsivity, or depression. Symptoms of stage 3 include confusion and memory loss, as the tau protein spread to other parts of the brain. Stage 4 is marked by dementia, as nerve cells in the brain die. During the final stages of CTE, the brain withers to roughly half the size of a normal brain. A federal judge has approved a $1 billion settlement between the NFL and thousands of ex-players. The money will go toward medical exams, concussion research, and payment for damages.